Plastic has never been more popular in a negative way. The pollution it causes is everywhere. Surface and underground water, in forests, in the air, and in animals, in their digestive systems, and even in the bloodstreams of us humans in the form of microparticles. But have you ever stopped to think that every micro comes from a macro? We are talking about objects and structures that surround us and that have in their composition plastics, PP, PET, BOPP, HDPE, and many others. They are affordable and make our lives more comfortable and convenient. But the large amount consumed and discarded daily has become a global problem. Besides the lack of capacity of waste management systems, which very often cannot deal with all that is produced for consumption, there are climatic, cultural, economic, and geographical factors that make the return of plastic to its production chain very difficult. The world trades $1.2 trillion worth of plastic materials and products every year in the form of polymers, intermediate and finished products, or even as scrap. Plastic pollution is becoming a worldwide problem. Plastic is everywhere. We produce more than 360 million metric tons of plastic every year. We trade about a trillion dollars in products related to plastics from primary to final products and 75% of all that production, all that trade becomes waste. It's hard to think how humanity once lived without them. However, we must relearn how to use less plastics, and most importantly, use them in a better way. What if we turn our attention to analyzing the life cycle of plastics? Dealing with plastic pollution requires actions across the value chain and at various levels. The very first step? We should all aim to produce and use less plastics than we do today. But when using them is unavoidable, at least we should use better plastics. At the production stage, to promote alternative plastics, especially those made from recovered materials or bioplastics, which are made from organic matter, such as crop residues. It can be a good alternative for industries in which plastic usage is very important for human health, such as food preservation and medical sectors. Additionally, bioplastics have less carbon emissions, helping in the fight against climate change. At the transformation stage, we can work with our industries to use more material substitutes, such as jute, cotton, marine or mineral products, instead of plastics. We need to keep in mind that substitutes also leave environmental footprints, so their adoption needs careful study. We must seek to reuse, better manage, and transform residues into useful products. Shopping bags made of plastic that we use only once are one of the major environmental concerns when we talk about single-use plastics. Many people are considering substitutes based on natural fibers, which in principle can be better for the environment and generate jobs in many countries. As an example, in Zambia, we noticed that the production of paper and paper products is very important for the local economy. This made us think that paper bags could be good alternatives to the plastic ones. But the question that remained was, are paper bags really better, environmentally speaking, than plastic bags? To find an answer, we did a life cycle assessment to compare a paper bag against a high-density polyethylene bag, considering that both are single-use products. The first one is that paper bags are heavier than plastic bags. This affects particularly the impacts that occur in the transport stages and at the end of life of the paper bags. The second reason is that craft paper production is very energy demanding and results in many emissions and effluents. The third reason is that wood pulp production depends on forestry, which incurs land use and consumes large amounts of water for irrigation. Substituting single-use plastics with other kinds of single-use products, even if they are based on natural fibers, is not always a good idea. As a contribution to this important issue, the SMEP program is sponsoring nine projects on plastics in Africa and in South Asia. Those projects showcase what can be done 
And also, we are producing a deeper analysis on material substitutes that can replace single-use plastics. Projects from initiatives such as SMEP, as well as those supported under the Basel Convention, and by various business, national, and multilateral organizations, all show that the plastic challenge can be overcome if all stakeholders cooperate and the rules are set right within and across countries. That makes a table stable. In less than two years, the dialogue on plastics pollution and the World Trade Organization has made some remarkable advancements. From mapping the over one trillion US dollars in plastics traded globally every year, to identifying existing gaps in transparency of the transboundary movements of plastics, to enhancing collaboration with other institutions working on the issue. One thing that has become clear is that the WTO offers a unique forum where trade and environmental officials can come together and identify ways in which trade and trade policies can be a key part of the solution to the growing environmental, social, health and economic challenges posed by plastic pollution. The plastic uh, pollution that uh, we deal with uh, comes from different areas in the world and I'm referring in particular to Galapagos but also to uh, uh, terrestrial uh, ecosystems. Uh, that's why uh, we believe uh, that uh, to global challenges uh, we need of course global responses and we coordinate here at the WTO uh, the dialogue uh, on plastic pollution together with Australia, Barbados, Fiji, China and Morocco. In March 2022 at the United Nations Environment Assembly member states uh, agreed to develop an international global treaty on plastic pollution, including in the marine environment. Um, and this is really important because we have industry, political and civil society uh, momentum on this topic like never before. At the World Trade Organization, members of the Dialogue on Plastics are doing just that, with the goal of contributing to the UN Environment Assembly process towards a global treaty against plastic pollution by 2024. UNCTAD with the support of the United Kingdom, is helping in this important global transition away from single-use plastics. What does it mean? That instead of using plastic, we need to use materials of plant or mineral origin, such as uh, bamboo, such as uh, sea salt, such as jute, such as bagasse, uh, such as aluminium, such as glass. Materials that by nature can be biodegradable, compostable or recyclable, and even can produce some waste, but it will be the type of waste that developing countries will be able to absorb and uh, manage under their systems for waste disposal. We believe that by substituting, we are getting into a faster transition from a plastic-free economy. Want to know more? Visit our dashboard for a complete overview and data access resulting from the work of the SMEP program.